We believe that every move should be a moving experience. Every week, my co-host Melissa Wallace and I will provide you with my team's unique marketing approach to selling homes and share with you our expertise in navigating the home buying process. We value the experience of our agents at Boston Connect Real Estate so much that not only will you hear my perspective on real estate topics, occasionally you will hear the expert thoughts and opinions of our experienced agents at Boston Connect Real Estate. Be a part of our roundtable. If you have any questions during the show, please call 781-837-4900. We'd love to talk real estate. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and wherever you'd like to listen to podcasts at Talk Real Estate Roundtable. If you would like a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me and my team to discuss your real estate needs, you can connect with me at bostonconnect.com or 781-826-8000. Now, sit back, relax, take good notes, and let's talk real estate. And hello to all my South Shore neighbors. You are listening to Talk Real Estate Roundtable. My name is Melissa Wallace. And, and my I name is Sharon McNamara. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you need no introduction, apparently. <laughs> you you got it. Jump You're right it. in. Yeah. You're on it. Yep. That's, you, mm -hmm. you heard that right, Sharon McNamara. Yeah. Hello, hello. Yes. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I'm back in the house and uh, loving everything about it. Uh, yeah, so I'm excited for 2024. How about you? Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, um, yeah I, I, I don't know what else to say, but I'm, yeah. I'm excited. Yeah, I, I love it. I was listening. Uh, Mark Stiles was uh, doing a little interview with Rob Hackler the other morning, and um, I get Mark's, you know, stuff. That's what we call it. That's like the official term for it, his stuff in my email box. But it's not junk for sure. Um, and I love his approach to this year is more, more in 24. So well, Mark Styles, if you're listening, which I doubt that you are, um, I think that that's a great more of everything, more of loving life, living life and all of the above. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Um, okay, well, you're back. I am. Yeah. And uh, you had a good time? <clears throat> yeah, I did, actually. Uh, Mark and I, you know, last minute, we decided that we were going to take a little trip, get 2023 behind us, and it was wonderful. I kicked that B.I., uh, you know, <laughs> I, can, I can't say it, so I guess. Oh, maybe the I B could. with the itch. Yeah, the B with the itch. I kicked <laughs> it right, we kicked it right out into 2020, you know, for, as we start 2024. But we were in Aruba. We decided to do it last minute. And the, one of the reasons is the weather is always just wonderful and perfect there. But I have to tell you, we're going, we're planning on doing it every year now. Um, it was so much fun. Um, it was very relaxing. It's a really good time of year for both of us, you know, for McNamara Plumbing. You know, he's, you know, going crazy right up until Christmas because people want, you know, their renovations and everything done before Christmas and the holidays. And then for us, it sort of like slows down. It's when agents sort of take mm -hmm. a little breather and mm -hmm. we're getting ready to revamp. So it was good. But I have got to tell you. Aruba knows how to put on fireworks. Oh, really? It was legitimately amazing. Like, it was so exciting that I thought I was videoing and I wasn't the whole time. Like, I was like, oh, another video, another video. And I wasn't videoing. Um, the whole island, it's a tradition. And the whole entire island is, like, lit up. Like, it was it, it, 100 times better than 4th of July really? in Boston. Yeah. Interesting. It was so amazing. I wonder why. I, I think it was just something, you know, maybe one started. It was probably like Christmas lights, you know? Mm -hmm. Hey, you put up Christmas lights. My Christmas lights will look better oh, than yours. Oh, they were yours. like everyone setting fire yeah. themselves. But not and... even fire, like, not like firecrackers or not like, like when I see like on 4th of July when we're usually in the vineyard, we are, we're in Edgar Town and like, like Ernie Box House, like he, he has a fire um, fireworks display, more of a homeowner type. These yeah. are like legit, like we're in Boston, like fireworks. Wow. They were, it, the whole island was lit up. It was so beautiful. I'll show you some snippets I have, but they're not great. Oh, <laughs> I feel all, like no matter what, like you head. can't capture a, something yeah. like that on video or pictures or anything. It yeah. just like never comes out. Yeah, it's, it's like seeing the Grand Canyon. Like yeah. the pictures just don't do it justice. And it was like Italy, like, you know what I mean? You take the pictures and you just, it's a feeling. Mm -hmm. I think a picture is a feeling and that's mm -hmm. what's missing in, mm -hmm. a, in a still, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, I think you're trying to capture the feeling in the picture, yeah. and it just doesn't work. It's all about feelings. I think that that's what real estate is all about, right? It's all about feelings. Yeah, and what kind of feelings do you have when it comes to real estate? <laughs> Exhaustion. <laughs> I'm feeling exhausted. No, you know, you, you sort of go, you know, I've been, you know, a real estate agent now. It's been like 21 years. It came up on LinkedIn. People were sending me all these messages. Oh, congratulations, 21 years. Wow. And there's a lot of ups, there's a lot of downs, there's a lot of in-between, and I tend to stay that in-between mode. Um, 
just so I can always be level for my clients, mm-hmm. right, and doing what's best for them. Uh, but the topic we have today is indeed one of the more difficult transitions to do in real estate. So it's, you know, navigating home buying and home selling mm-hmm. at the same time. And how does that balancing act work? So yeah. that's what we're going to talk about. We forgot to mention the one and only in the oh, way today. The one and only. Tim, Tim McKinney. He is our man. Hello, Tim. Hello. Good morning, ladies. Good, good morning. morning. And happy new year to you. Happy do you new have new some year. resolutions for the year or what? Um, mm. No, not not really. Just just kind of keep doing what I'm doing because it's uh, it's working be working well. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it sounded like that was the first time you've ever been asked that question. I was literally going to yeah, say yeah, the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> like ever. Um, that is so funny. Well, every year I come up with a word that is sort of like keeps my focus yeah. for what is like my year ahead, you know, and then I usually do like a little Canva picture of it and whatever, I put it under my blotter. Last year, I believe my word was purpose, right? Mm-hmm. So like living with purpose. And this year I went into ChatGPT and told them, hey, these are my goals. This is what I'm looking for. Give me a word that will sum up all of that. So when I look at it, it will always keep my goals in mind. And the word was thrive. And yeah, I love it. There you go. Yeah, maybe I'll get a tattoo. You've been saying that for the seven years <laughs> that I've known you, so I, know. I don't think it's going to happen. No, I know. And besides <laughs> that, I want one that says faith. But now every time I think about faith, because I was, oh, I am going so in the wrong yeah. direction. We this probably morning. won't even get to our topic. Today. Yeah, I'm sorry. Hey, it's just the way I roll. I'm just back from vacation, and it's our show, so we can do whatever we want. Yeah. But um, when I think of faith now, I think it's because when we we're in Aruba, they played George Mon- Michael's song a lot. George Michael's in Aruba? Uh, no, the faith. Wham, right? You gotta oh. have faith. Right? Oh, they do? They did, yeah. Oh. It was interesting. If they had someone play an acoustic guitar at dinner, it was they were always playing that song. <laughs> that is so weird. Was it written there? I, I, <laughs> we'd, have to, we'd have to Google it. I don't know. That's funny. Well, there's a car alarm going off outside, so <laughs> yeah. sorry about that, everybody. Um, yeah, no, that's interesting. That was I would funny think that it of would you. Be... Was it written there? I don't know. Maybe George Michael fell in love there. Yeah, oh, see? Yeah, see see the acoustic guitar thing? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. <laughs> if I could yeah. touch your body. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know. No, but not everybody has a body maybe like you. Maybe that's what you want to say when you're in Aruba. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Maybe. During the fireworks. During, yeah. there's n- they're not just on New Year's Eve. I should have FaceTimed you during the fireworks rather than me dancing on the dance floor. So. Yeah, you would just kept screaming, I can't hear you, but look at Mark. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no. Well, we yeah, what, what a wonderful what a wonderful jam yeah. tune yeah. I think this is. Wham. But uh, wham. Um, yeah, you gotta so, have faith. Yeah, well, we got faith. Yeah, yeah so I don't know if you're gonna get the tattoo. No, I, I now I don't know I can get the tattoo faith without thinking about George Michael. Plus, we have Faith Birmingham, who is an oh, agent. Oh yeah, here. she's an agent. Yeah, uh, she's wonderful. I haven't seen her yet since we've been back. All right, let's get on to our topic. Enough of enough of this little gab. But the, hey, listen, it wouldn't be us if we didn't start our yeah. shows this way. And I just want to say, you know, happy holidays to everybody. I hope you had wonderful, wonderful holidays and happy, happy New Year. Um, I so, we were sort of on hiatus the way that the holidays fell this year, and us being able to take a little time off to be with our family friends and loved ones it was it was really nice so um sorry for the replays but you got us now yeah you got us you probably wish also a a couple weeks ago i was getting my nails done and uh she went very early i was very grateful for that and 7 15 7 15 a.m Mm-hmm. Ellie, Ellie at the gala. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I was getting my nails done and, you know, people started trickling in and stuff like that. And um, Ellie was asking me about my house. And all of a sudden, like, you know, after a couple of minutes, this woman next to me was like, I'm sorry to interrupt, but do you work at Boston Connect? And I was like, <laughs> I do. And she was like, and you do a radio show? Oh, and I was gosh. like, I do do a radio show. And she was like, oh, I, I listen all the time. I haven't been able to catch a lot of the Saturday shows, um, but I listened all the time. Did you buy a house? <laughs> and I was like, I did. And she's like, I was thinking about you. And that was so sweet. That, that is again. so awesome. So, yeah. um, it's fun to hear that people are yeah. listening and care about us. <laughs> it, well, <laughs> so I think they like it. <laughs> that, I think they we, like how crazy we it's are. It's always nice to run into fans. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. She uh, was just so sweet. So nice. Cool. And it's interesting too because Tim you know for you as well right I'm sure people hear your voice all the time and it's like when they see you it's like 
sometimes I think people aren't expecting what they see when they see me, you know? Yeah, I don't I mean, know if she was expecting to see what I was looking like at 7.15 <laughs> on a Saturday right, morning, yeah, but... Hey, yeah. Uh, so raw. Yeah. yeah. Well, if anybody's yeah. listening, I just want to let you know, I'm 5'10", and I weigh, like, 120, and that's what you should expect to see. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you should be expecting. Uh, no, it's interesting that you say that, though. Again, here we are right off on track again, but I haven't had a chance to talk to you either. We were on the plane. Um, we were heading down to Aruba. I know we'll talk about turbulence, but anyways, we were on the plane, and Mark and I both had aisle seats because we booked so late, so there weren't much choices. And there was a, a woman coming on the plane, and she looked down. She saw Mark. She's like, oh, hey, Mark. How are you? Blah, blah, blah. So he's like, hey, how you doing? And he grew up with her in hell. He went oh, to high yeah. school with her. He was a, She was a couple of years younger than him or something. And, um, oh, he's like, oh, this is my wife, Sharon. And she's like, I listen to your radio show all oh, the time. Nice. <laughs> so I wish I could remember her name, but I, I don't. I, I don't know that he introduced me to her. I think yeah. he just said, this is my wife, Sharon. So, yeah, it's nice to hear that. But if you are listening, here's a couple of things. I want to do some housekeeping. Um, Melissa and I are going to be meeting next week, and um, our goal is to be very much on purpose for 2024, and we're going to be coming up with an agenda for minimally the first quarter um, of the year. I heard that Ed Perry was here yesterday, too. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Oh, we were in I meetings. did not see yeah, him. Yeah, he stopped by. Um, oh, that's wonderful. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great impression. Sarah so... Melissa, what a wonderful office you have. Oh my gosh. Set up for the show. I oh Tim. Is... That Tim, is so good. You could totally you do could totally make up. some I'm phone so calls bad. for him. No, 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 no way. No, thank you. No, he, uh, he, he, he no. No, oh my gosh. That was really, really good though. Yeah, that was great. That was good. <laughs> it sounded just oh, like him. Um but anyways, we're gonna be coming up with some topics. So today we're gonna be talking about, as I said, buying and selling at the same time, and especially with new construction. I know that that's something that a lot of people have a hard time understanding and hard time, you know, the perception of new construction. When will it be built? Usually your timeline for new construction goes further on than, you know, the timeline that you're given. Um, So we always try to put realistic dates on that. Um, So but if you have any ideas or topics that you would like for us, feel free to call us. Uh, and if you have any questions for us today, feel free, 781-837-4900. If you just want us to get on topic, feel free to call us. But if you want to just say Happy New Year and keep this sort of going as the beginning of the year and um, embracing embracing us as we embrace you. How's that? Yeah. Sounds great it. to yeah. me. 781-837-4900. Um, all right. So <clears throat> this was your topic yeah. because a lot of our topics come from what's going on in our business and sort of well, conversations that are happening here at the office at Boston Connect Real Estate. And um, I think you are, do, are are dealing with this right now, I believe, correct? Um, somebody maybe in Cushing Trail yeah. is um, purchasing and mm-hmm. they also have um, a property to sell. Yeah. Which is pr- pretty pretty common, I think, with new construction because a lot of like you know, unless you're a first time home buyer that can afford to you know build a home, mm-hmm. um, you usually have something to sell. Yeah, or you've already sold it and you're at the point where you know you're you're ready to build. Yeah, you just have the money in the bank yeah. and you're maybe living with family or renting. I think it's really hard to do that. I mean, that was one of the processes when you're thinking about buying and selling at the same time. <sighs> When, you know, we when the inventory, well, the inventory is still low um, and when the rates were lower and everybody was just like, I need to get into a house, I need to get into a house. And they were trying to make their offer look as beautiful as they possibly could so the seller would choose them. A lot of people were selling their homes and then just sort of sitting on it and mm-hmm. making it like, you know, sitting on it like it was an egg, I guess, <laughs> and yeah. just like nesting over that money so it just put them in a better position when it came to negotiating for the next house Mm -hmm. because you know if we ended up with 24 offers and we've been doing a lot of like spring cleaning around here and mary gave like there was a stack of like 34 offers that we got on one of our properties a couple of years ago when this was big and you know in order to shine out of 34 offers it made sense if you didn't have a home sale contingency even Mm -hmm. though we knew it would sell quickly because everything was it was sort of like timeline and processes and why take the chance, mm-hmm. right? So um, 
that is one aspect of it. So if that is the route that people, and you know what? We had other clients that I'm thinking of right now. They sold probably three years ago now. And she decided to, we kept on showing her houses, <clears throat> excuse me, showing her houses and um, just nothing was a good fit for what she wanted. And, you know, I, kudos to her. Like she didn't want to just settle, mm -hmm. which I don't think anybody should. And she, um, she just couldn't find anything. She started renting, still couldn't find anything, just continues renting. So mm. sometimes that is your option. But yeah, if you don't want to do that. I guess I guess this agenda here would tell us some things that you could do. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I mean, there's definitely different approaches, you know, that homeowners mm -hmm. have when they're buying and selling at the same time. Like you said, you buy first, then you sell, or you sell first, then you buy. Like, there's just so many, and I think you said it yesterday. Like, what comes first, the chicken or the egg type of thing? But we're gonna specifically talk about like new construction because you and Mary are so involved with new construction you have two developments right now um you know with stonebridge homes and you've had plenty of developments in the past as well so i feel like you guys are pretty good at you know helping clients buy and sell at the same time when it comes to new construction so yeah and that is the thing i mean a lot of times too and we'll we'll make this one of our shows we should have a piece of paper um so we can write all these down as we're thinking and again if you have any ideas or suggestions feel free to call us 781-837-4900 um if you don't want to talk to us you can just uh tell tim to jot it down for us and he'll let us know about it um <clears throat> what was your question <laughs> I'm i just said that you guys are great at it yeah well you know that is the thing is you know sort of navigating the whole thing is really difficult and in new construction it just puts another level of confusion onto the process and i'll use cushing trails as an example so cushing trails is my new uh, newer subdivision. We came live right after Labor Day in September of 2023. Um, we have two buildings up. We have some, um, which we call it. We have some foundations in right now, so we're moving along. But we're also in that process where we're waiting for National Grid to give us yeah. things that we need to get the electricity. So, um, you know, we're sort of in that process where we don't exactly know and we can't do certain things until we have that. So we are working through all of those things, but sometimes our hands are tied. Um, <clears throat> so we basically are telling people, you know, from the time you sign purchase and sale agreement, like you should be considering, you know, just give yourself six months as a good Mm -hmm. number mm -hmm. right so if you think about that six months from now it's going to be june right so people are like wow i have to wait that long when do i put my house on the market right and also when you are buying new construction in the purchase and sales agreement if you have a home sale contingency a lot of times the new construction developments and developers they're putting a stipulation on there where they're going to give you 30 days to get your house under agreement mm -hmm. right because they don't want to lose momentum either right um, and that, I think, too, is just a sort of a good, I don't want to use the word barrier, but I just did. It's of, you know, making sure that sellers are being realistic with their pricing, being, you know, choosing the right real estate agent, you know, to make sure that they're doing the right uh, marketing, advertising, promoting, all of those things to get yeah. the house sold. Yeah. It isn't like, oh, I'm going to buy new construction and I'm just going to stick a for sale by owner sign out there and see how that rolls. Like the, the builders are just not going to like that. Um, so for us, it works out nicely. The builder feels confident in it and the person buying our units feel comfortable with this. So <clears throat> one of the people we have, one of the reservations right now, we are going to be selling their home in Whitman, and um, that's what we're trying to do right now is finalize timing and the purchase and sales agreement to make sure that they are, um, you know, that we're we're monitoring the mm -hmm. dates with that. So we never want someone homeless either. So um, well, I'm sure it's comforting for the builder to know that, like, you literally have all sides. <laughs> yeah, I think it, and, and I think, too, because. You hate to sit. Well, if anyone knows me, knows me. I, I'm. I tend to be. What? What is that? Type D, right? I'd like just sort of like. Um, I like things lined up a certain way. I want to make sure. Like I'm always on top is of that what type they. Type A. Oh, is it Type A? Yeah. What's I don't D? Know. Oh, because it might be something to do with that new book I'm reading. So yeah, forget that. Know. Scratch it. Can we rewind that? <laughs> I wish I had some of the buttons that Tim has. I'd be <laughs> rewind. Rewind. Yeah, he can't rewind time. Unfortunately. Yeah. I know. 
yeah, type A, I guess. But it's good, though, because, you know, my job as, you know, when I work for new construction, I represent the seller. If somebody comes to us and they don't have representation, I still represent the seller unless they say to me, like in this instance, these people said, no, we want you to represent us as a buyer's agent, which is called dual agency and is very, very legal in the state of Massachusetts. But they have confidence in us because uh, we're one person that's mm -hmm. monitoring when their house is going on the market, when we get that offer, and when we get multiple offers on that property. Um, those are the things we're going to be looking at. It's going to be what are the dates? Yeah. Who is flexible? Because that's going to be really important, right? Yeah. Is and two that can be another class too. Is like when you're writing up your offer, like the questions to ask the the seller's agent, right? Um, because if it is the person is buying new construction, then there could be a possibility like, okay, we're getting a small sto snowstorm on Saturday, but I have a friend in Utah. Her name is Cindy and she is a real estate agent as well. So if anyone is moving there, please mm. ring and ling me and I will forward you over to her. Um, and she, they're getting 36 inches. What? Yeah, she said it so casually. Three. Oh, yeah, we're getting 36 She's inches. She's like, yeah, we're getting 36 inches today. The ski slopes are going to be great. And I was like, wouldn't you like, is, that sounds like How a, would you leave your house if it's 36 I, I, inches? I do not know. I, it must be something they're familiar with down it's there. over feet. there. Yeah, I know. Where is this? Utah. Utah. Salt Lake City. Uh, Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, yeah. I want to go visit her. I told her I want I said, I want to go hunker down and like, don't you just picture a fireplace? How do you leave? Movies, popcorn. Doesn't that sound like fun? Yeah. Um, <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> well, yeah, if I had, you know, if I had the time, the luxury to do that. <laughs> but I mean, how do you get there? And how do you get how do you leave <laughs> with three feet of snow? Yeah, I don't know. They, they must be used to it. I don't know. Uh -huh. she's, if she's on Clubhouse, I'll, I guess I can ask her that question. Yeah. I mean, we've dealt with three feet of snow. Where we live in New England. Hello. But I mean, three feet in one day. How do you survive? <laughs> I don't know. Well, we we're supposed to go one to three inches tomorrow, I think. I, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what to think anymore. I mean, I've been trying this for 32 years. And I don't know what to think anymore when yeah, it I mean, I just don't even care. I mean, it is what it is. When it gets here, let me know. Yeah, tomorrow I have too much to do at my house, so I don't yeah. even care what it does. You should outside. really start unpacking. I mean, seriously. That's what I'm doing how, tomorrow. How long have you been in that house? Can you not? <laughs> I mean, seriously, it's time. I, I haven't had time. You're, it's, it's your house. You're staying. No one's taking it away from you. I understand that. <laughs> I'm not trying to make a swift getaway. I wouldn't be able to carry all my boxes anyways. I can barely get up and down the stairs. But uh, no, uh, yeah, tomorrow I will be I will be uh, home unpacking. I just got really emotional for some reason. Why? I don't know. I just had a flashback to like the, your closing day and us. It was myself, you, Mary, and Kristen having champagne in your kitchen and like hugging you and like, Again, I know I'm not your mother. Your mother knows I'm not your mother. <laughs> but like feeling so, like so proud of you. Thanks. And that, yeah. that just see, that's a feeling, right? Yeah. You're not going to get that in a picture. No. I did buy those uh, champagne glasses, though. I know you did. I, 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 I was Amazon. not leaving mine there. <laughs> I, I love them way too much. It was selfish of me, and yeah. I know. Uh, yeah, yeah. I will be home. Maybe I'll have a glass of champagne just to. Want me to help, come help you unpack? You, you can't. Oh, we're supposed to get snowshoes. All oh, of us. Oh, yeah, I have some. Oh, okay, great. All right, let's go do that. That All would right. be fun. All right. Anyways, back this, to this, new construction. This show, yeah, jeez. <laughs> Anybody listening? I don't think so. I re <laughs> really? I don't, even, I don't even know if Tim is still there. Oh, wait, <laughs> my mother left. is. She's Tim texting left. me. <laughs> Tim left. She's like, for the love of My Mary. mother says, I love that you love her so much, Sharon. Oh, and I love Liz, too. And I'm sure she's super proud of you as well. So, okay, back on track. Options for buying and selling at the same time. So option one was buy first, then sell. Okay, so when we were just talking about, we just jumped into the real, uh, the new construction aspect of things. So some of the things that you can do, I guess you could do this with new construction. Is it going to put you in a better position? Eh, I don't know that it really matters at this point in where the market is. If you have your house sold already, it just puts you in a more comfortable position that you know that you have your money safely tucked somewhere else, mm -hmm. right? So then as the new construction process is happening, then you can sort of monitor and tell mom, dad, aunt, uncle, whoever, you know, this is how long we expect that we'll still be here. Now, this gets really confusing and really more difficult for people who have children, especially if you're buying in one town and selling in another town. Mm -hmm. 
because the kids with school and you know, yeah. you're trying to anticipate when they're going to be starting school and all those things. My suggestion for that is just to, you know, go and talk to the superintendent's office about that and just say, you know, hey, can they start right after vacation, one of the vacations or something like that? The house will should be done in the next couple of weeks, right? So long yeah. as you have a signed purchase and sales agreement, some towns are willing to do that. Um, <clears throat> so that is one of the, <clears throat> sorry, what is wrong with me today? That is one of the things that you can do is, you know, just sort of have that money tucked away. And when you're ready, you're ready. That's sort of the best scenario. But if you're renting and now you have a lease, that's another problem too. So I have had a lot of younger couples come to me from like Somerville and Medford and out that way, looking at Cushing Trails. The uh, Cushing Trails, by the way, is 40 units, townhouse style. Um, base price starts at 570 for a two bedroom and 630, we have some three bedrooms. Um, and so we've, we're getting a lot of people that are coming and Every single one of them, they're like locked into a lease. Mm. A lot of them, <clears throat> we were busy before the holidays. I'd say really probably like October-ish. I think a lot of them, their lease was going to be expiring soon. So they were just yeah. trying to figure that all out. So here's one of my my tips of advice for people who are, you know, you're renting and maybe you're getting a new apartment for the first time or you're in the same apartment Definitely look at what it takes to get out of your lease. And I don't know if it's being completely transparent with your landlord and saying, hey, I am in the process of looking for a home. Mm -hmm. what, are, what are your stipulations? Because if you are in a one-year lease and you leave when you have six months left, some of these landlords are expecting you to pay the six months. So oh. you never want to get yourself in that position. No. A lot of the bigger buildings, um, you know, the bigger developments, apartment buildings and everything, they tend to do things a little differently. They may say, okay, um, yep, you just let us know, you know, 60 days before what your closing date is and then you would owe like one extra month. Yeah. Something like mm -hmm. that. So make sure. And when you're looking for apartments and what you're paying for apartments right now, it's all called negotiation. So you negotiate. Yeah. If somebody tells you, hey, it's six months, and then you just say, is there any room on that? Because I am looking right now. And if they say no, then you say, fine, I'll find someone who will. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. <clears throat> you seemed intrigued by that. <laughs> well, I was listening to you intently. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I, I guess I was surprised in the moment, but now I'm not surprised about the whole, like, lease thing because um, <clears throat> we have one of our agents. She, um, she does not, like, property management, but, like, she works very closely with one of her clients who have rentals, mm -hmm. and one of their tenants wanted to break their lease. They fell in love. They want to move out of state and all that stuff, whatever. So... Um, they, you know, had to come to an agreement of how, I mean, I think they had like six months left on their mm -hmm. lease and, um, you know, they had to come to an agreement for, um, you know, breaking their lease. Mm -hmm. But it, I mean, it is, it, I mean, it's a contract. Yeah. Like anything else, it's yeah. a contract and, you know, there's got to be some negotiations unless it's put into the contract. Oh, if you want to break your lease, then feel free. Like, what's mm -hmm. the point of the lease then? You yeah. know what I mean? Well, and that's why contracts, you know, some people say contracts were made to be broken. I don't agree with that, but that's what some people say. But I do think that that's yet another good show. And let's see how many good shows we can get out of that. Maybe we can have an attorney come on with us that talks about rental contracts mm -hmm. and, you know, being <clears> – <throat> a lot of times we've done the rental shows based on the standpoint of being um, – you know, the landlord, but maybe from a tenant perspective, some of the things that they should consider um, when they're buying. And that's actually another good question, too, for, um, you know, some of our loan officers who are, are with us, you know, that come and do the shows is, you know, how does that work? Um, is Jasmine listening? No, she's probably out snowmobiling. I don't, uh... Kristen's listening. Hi, Kristen. Hi, Kristen. I wonder if Karen Kristen... Monroe. Hi. Hi, Karen Monroe. I wonder if uh, Kristen has Jasmine's number. Maybe we could text her and see if she can join us. Because I'm wondering when you're doing the pre-approval process, is that something that they put into their head about... That they're renting? Yeah, that they're renting and they have to break a lease. Isn't that a great question for Jasmine? Mm, that is a great question. Well, specifically when they're buying new construction or just in just general? Just in general. Mm. Yeah, actually. I don't know because I didn't have a lease... <laughs> 
Mary and Cher. I'm with Mary and Sam. <laughs> yeah, I didn't run from you. Um, yeah, yeah, no, I don't. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's interesting, huh? Um, I would think that it needs to be in. I'm just trying to think of all the questions that I asked Jasmine. Would they sort of be similar? Uh, do you have to take into account these things? Hmm, I don't know. Um, but if Jasmine's listening, hopefully she'll um call in. Um. Uh, Jenny says, where there's a will, there's a way. I agree. I don't remember what she's agreeing with, but <laughs> thanks, Jenny. Uh, Jenny is a full-time realtor here at Boston Connect Real Estate, and she's joined me quite a few times uh, on the radio show, and of course, Kristen. Um, Kristen says, such a good point. I had someone tell me that their lease had a 12-month notice in order to break the lease. Renter was told that they could have negotiated that before signing the lease. Which, yeah, I'm sorry, but 12 months, I don't even know what's going to happen to me tomorrow Mm -hmm. or later, today. Like, I don't know how my day's going to go. You think that, you know, 12 months, I'm sorry, that's a little too long. It's a little too long to not know what's going on. (laughs) Anyways, am I talking to myself? (laughs) Yeah, I think so. Um yeah, Kristen, that's 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 wild. Uh, you know, having a having to let your uh, you know landlord know twelve months ahead if you're going to be moving. Well, I mean, how does that work when a couple? Like, I know we're talking about new construction, but um, you know, maybe sub leasing. Like, I don't know. Like, how do you how do you do that? Oh, even Ginny just said tenant may have the ability to sub yeah. sublet. You okay. know, I, it's. Again, like we said, it's a contract, so make sure that you're reading all of these things and, like, sort of breaking it down and understanding because maybe they won't want you to break the lease. Mm-hmm. But, like, you know, like Ginny said, where there's a will, there's a way. Like, money talks, I suppose. Yeah. But you have to be able to afford these things. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not just when you get into a rental or a, or a lease or anything. Like, it's not just, oh, can I afford this monthly? It's like, what happens if something happens literally Mm -hmm. (laughs) in your life where you can't live here anymore just like anything else me i think you had said it even like Mm -hmm. a couple days after i closed like you know if you can't afford it you can't do it just sell it like that's the whole point of real estate like if you can't do it anymore you can't afford it then you sell it you go and you sell it and you try you know try to make a profit or whatever but um you know oh Kristen is agreeing with me shows that you need to read the lease before signing um yeah, so, I mean, like I said, I haven't had a lease in a long time. Mary and Sam didn't make me sign one, so I'm grateful for that because I was like, oh, by the way, I got an accepted offer. Well, Mary knew, but, <laughs> oh, by the way, I'll be moving out in the next couple weeks. But, um, you know, but the thing with Mary and I and Sam and even Holly, like, yes, I didn't have a lease, but we had open communication. The goal was for me to move and to buy a house so there there was that expectation always of moving I wasn't going to die there you know Mm -hmm. so it's important to sort of have that open communication especially if you're purchasing new construction because new construction has a way of being able to build in like these buffer times because Sometimes you can't get National Grid out there to, you know, do what they need to do in order to get an electricity. Sometimes you can't get, you know, the gas company, like yeah. anything like that. And those aren't those aren't predicted, but they're almost like, OK, here's the expectation in case this happens mm-hmm. type of thing. So, um, yeah, I mean, if you're renting, for sure, you should be telling mm-hmm. whoever it is that, you know, you're you're purchasing new construction or you're purchasing anything, really. Yeah. Um, I'm just letting Kristen know that I sent her a link to, so if she is listening and she wants to join us, um, she can join us uh, via Clubhouse now that we have that working right, um, because that would be good to get her input into it too. And I don't even know if Ginny, I would send one to Ginny if I knew if she was on Clubhouse or not. But um, yeah, so I think that that is really a good point. And I guess I reached out why I was a little quiet there. You probably enjoyed that little station break I gave you. (laughs) I was talking to myself. Hello? (laughs) (laughs) Um, I was on Clubhouse where I have, you know, different people that I connect with and Jasmine and this uh, Mark, um, their loan officers. And um, I reached out to both of them to see if they could answer that question because it is really a good question because if people are coming to you and you're trying to pre-approve them, that has to be a question that they're asking. Like, how how long do you have on your lease? Because if you have 18, 18, if you have eight months left on your lease, 
and you find something next month, that means you have, you know what I mean? You find something next month and then. Yeah, I don't remember. I mean, again, I knew Jasmine before my conversation with her. So maybe she was, Mm. I I don't remember her asking me if I had a lease, but. Yeah. Or Mm. like if I could break it. I'm I'm sure she knew that I could negotiate getting out of it with Mary and Sam. I sent out two links to people. And if they don't answer, hey, if there are any other loan officers out there that are listening to us this morning, uh, give us a call. 781-837-4900. Um, or even one of our attorneys, if any of them are listening. But I did put this down as rental contracts and uh, questions to ask about that because I think that that will be a good topic. Mm-hmm. Um, but for right now, we uh, skipped our break. That's okay. We sort of blabbed all morning. I wonder yeah. if people missed us. I, I mean, I hope so. Yeah. Okay. It's I think, nice, to, I think it's nice to be missed. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to be missed. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I sent you a text while I was away. Do you miss me? You're like... Is that a question? I said, duh. Yeah, duh. Um, Okay. So, um, again, you are listening to Talk Real Estate Roundtable. My name is Sharon McNamara. I am the broker owner of Boston Connect Real Estate. I am also a full-time real estate agent uh, that helps people buy and sell homes uh, all throughout, you know, connecting Boston to the South Shore, the Cape, and all over. Um, we have a wonderful group of agents here at Boston Connect Real Estate, and some of them are chiming in this morning, uh, giving us their inter- their feedback uh, as well on this topic. So we have Kristen Hallett, who is a full-time real estate agent here at Boston Connect Real Estate, and Jenny Wandell, who is also a full-time real estate agent. Yes. <clears throat> and- Kristen will be on with me on Tuesday. Next, next Tuesday, she'll be on there. And Ginny, I think, will be in February. Because at the end of the month, I'm having um, Trish Flynn and Jess Page on again. And we're going to do um, a continuation of the Airbnb and rental uh, show that we all did together. So Yeah. And I also saw that Jess is having a an event in April. So. Yes. She's doing a first-time home buyer. Yeah. I sent her an email yesterday. And I said, hey, look at you being all proactive with getting your events ready for the for the spring. And then I, it got returned to me because it... I wasn't sending it to her. I was sending it to Microsoft, apparently. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Welcome back from vacation. <laughs> um, yeah, so it'd be, that'd be interesting. Is someone joining us on Clubhouse? Yeah. yeah, it's Kristen. I keep on trying to invite <clears throat> her up so she can talk. Oh. Yeah, yeah Kristen, I want to hear about your... Uh, I, I, we're sort of getting away from our topic, but that's us. So, mm-hmm. um, uh, yeah, I want to hear about her experience with the whole, like, leasing. Hello? Good morning. Topic, but that's us, so. Oh, that's me. I heard myself. Yeah, it's weird that that's coming back. Because I'm on Facebook Live. Oh. oh, that's why, yeah. So you might have to shut that off. But Kristen, I hope that like Brian wasn't really upset with you last night. I kept Kristen. I was like, no, I have something else to tell you. No, I have something else to tell you. I haven't seen you in a week. Well, what time did you leave? Seven. Yeah, that was still early. Chatterbox was ready. We were supposed to go to Chatterbox, but I don't even know what that got is. Got taken up instead. Hmm. Nice. I stayed here until like 10. Uh, I like this. Um, I like this talk because it's so true. Now that's a question I'm going to ask when I'm at Cochise. It is, are you currently in a lease? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's the other thing too, is, um, you know, coming up, one of the things I was thinking about this morning, cause I'm going to be over at Cushing this morning too, is, you know, coming up with a form and, uh, Kristen helps my team, myself, you know, the McNamara Horton team, that's me and Mary. Um, she helps us with a lot of our open houses over at Cochise. And when she's doing Cochise, that gives Mary the opportunity to do Cushing and gives me the opportunity to do other things as well. Um, and, you know, we were having some good conversations about, you know, instead of just having an open house, I feel I feel like, well, you can do it in new construction, not so much in an open house, but like just having that here, sit down in our office, let's just have a conversation. It's not like pressure or anything like that, but mm-hmm. how can we best serve you? What are your needs? So Kristen, don't you agree that like these questions right now that are coming up are like perfect scenarios for yeah. us to help somebody, right? Absolutely. All right. So how are you going to utilize that? (laughs) Yeah, no, it's true. I mean, there should be, you know what, that's all conversation. And I know I've said to you before with the weather, obviously tomorrow, who knows, but I love to meet them at one um, model home and then take a walk through. And then that gives me the chance as we're walking to kind of have those conversations. Where are you guys now? What are you doing? And really get to know what their needs are. Mm -hmm. But that, that is, that's huge. I know we've talked about the idea of maybe having it be like, um, more of a 
you know, they're visiting the open mm-hmm. house. Yeah. I don't know how else to. The visitors, you know, yeah. Ver- and guests. Verbalize that, right. Mm-hmm. Where it's not your traditional, like, you're coming in, but more of, um, you know, an introduction, I guess. I'm not sure how to verbalize it. Yeah. And I think, you know, one of the things when you're there too is um, I think it's great for, you know, we were just talking about a scenario that I have over at Cushing that I am the listing agent on the property and the people buying it want us to sell their home, which is great because, you know, we're able to like stay on track with all the dates and the timeline and, and all of those important factors, right? Because ultimately, you know, people might think that real estate agents, and we talked a little bit about this yesterday, Kristen, and I love having our conversations because you let my like ADD entrepreneurial mind just go wild and come up with other thoughts too and you know the conversation about um really having people up oh, do we have a phone call yes we do we have colleen in plymouth and she happens to be a, a property manager and she can answer a oh, question thank for you. you oh awesome this is wonderful colleen hi colleen i am sharon mcnamara broker owner of boston connect real estate tell me a little bit about you Hi, I own a property management company in uh, out of Plymouth. I do uh, rentals from Boston to the bridge. Um, I also manage condominiums, and I manage uh, commercial space. I know Ginny. Ginny and I did many years on Silver Lake School Committee when I lived in Kingston, but I'm in Plymouth now. Oh, okay. Um, what I wanted to let you know is, yes, in fact, a rental lease is a binding document. Mm -hmm. What usually happens when somebody wants to buy a house that's in there, they usually go to the property management company and they will tell them that it is a lease and that um, if you want us to try to help you by renting it to take up the rest of the lease uh, and you agree to this, we'll do that. Normally, uh, a person will end up probably paying one or two months on the lease and if the property management company and the owner agrees the new person will take over that that lease going forward answer to your other question on a 12-month lease it is done every day in boston for many of the people that rent to students they do need to know they'll usually send them out like april for the Mm -hmm. uh coming up september and they usually go April to April, or sometimes they go July, July, but it happens all the time because, again, it's a business, Mm -hmm. it's a contract, and these um, property management companies and landlords have to be able to make their money by having all of their rentals filled. Yeah. I'm so glad that you called. Again, what was your name again, Colleen? Colleen from Plymouth. From Plymouth. Okay. So I, um, a couple questions that I have for you. So if you, it seems like you're working with a lot of buildings and properties and a lot of doors that you're sort of managing. My question is, is it, is it unrealistic for me as a real estate agent to think that perhaps if I went in and said, okay, I'm looking at your lease and it's telling me that you are, if I do leave, I have to give you 30 days. Uh, 60 days or 90 days, or I have to be responsible for the rest of the lease. Is it something that can be negotiated? I mean, why can't it be negotiated? Well, like I like I just said, um, the lease usually when you uh, at the end of the lease, you usually have to let them know 60 days. But if you've got somebody that needs to, like I said, get out of the lease, they need to go to the property management company right away and ask if something can be done. A lot of times people will do it uh, and try to help them out. Probably younger, uh, not younger, but smaller landlords won't mm-hmm. because they don't want to go after looking for a new rental if they're paying the amount of money to for a lease because a lot of people use leasing agents. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is, you have to keep in mind, it is a legal document. Yep. It is binding. And you're absolutely correct. Uh, a loan officer is going to want to know because obviously that is a debt that you have, and if you're paying, and uh, you know, as you all understand, most three bedrooms to four bedrooms now was $3,800 a month. Mm-hmm. Well, if you put that times 
uh, eight months, that's a large thing that's mm-hmm. on your credit report. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. That's why, I mean, I love this. We call this a roundtable for this specific reason because it's like a thought comes into your head and you're like, hey, wait, maybe I have never thought of it that way. And I know you were saying that you do a lot of the, you know, a lot of leases in the city. And I know my daughter, my oldest daughter, Casey, went to BU Law School. And I have to tell you, that's interesting because we couldn't find... I would call and say, oh, I'm the broker owner of a, you know, whatever, not even looking for a referral fee or anything like that. Like, hey, I'm just looking for a nice, good place for my daughter. They, there's a lot of places will not rent to law students, which I found out. Um, so I was able to reach out to an agent in that area and she was able to find something for her. But I know that the lease was very, very specific. That's the other thing too, Colleen. How many people do you see that take this serious enough that they have the lease reviewed by an attorney? So of course I did. I reached out to Emmanuel Ebot from Styles Law in Marshfield and he's reviewed every single lease for every property that Casey's ever rented. Do you see a lot of people doing that and do you suggest it? Well, yes, you should you should be very clear about what you're renting to, and if you're it's the first time around and it's the first time for the parents, yes, you should do that. But I will tell you, it is a common knowledge. Uh, nobody wants to rent to law students, and it happened to me uh, years ago in the city because they find something wrong. Uh, and they want to make you the first case in <laughs> yeah, front practicing, of the judge. Practi- and that's practicing exactly law. why they will not rent to them. Mm-hmm. But on the other hand, you talk about B.C., here's a cute story. Over in B.C., a couple of the dorms, some kids were up there playing golf on the top mm. of the buildings, from one building to the other. You know, the uh, they put little holes in the roofs mm-hmm. to do that. Uh, and I will tell you that all of the parents, and I think it was three dorms, were assessed the cost for new roofs. Oh, my goodness. All right, I'm going to I'm going to one up you on that. You ready for this one? So my daughter lived on Beacon Street right on the corner of Beacon and St. Mary's, right? Because she went to BU. Yeah. law school so she was right you know that um restaurant the mexican restaurant that's right there on that corner mm-hmm. um she lived on the right above the restaurant and one day she's there next thing you know fire engines are there the fire alarms are going off all this craziness no electricity and you know she gets up and greets the fire department well there were a group of undergrads and that's the other thing too is i found out a lot of the landlords don't want to rent to undergrads because they don't have that responsibility in them yet so he did do it for this one time for some reason so there were like four girls in the apartment above my daughter and it was hot 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 we had like that like a what do you call that like that summer where it's just really hot you know in october september october Ooh. They decided to get a rubber pool and blow it up, put it in the middle of their living room. They got a hose and put the hose from the kitchen faucet into the pool, but they thought it was taking too long to fill up, so they left and went and had a few drinks. (coughs) Lo and behold water is pouring into Casey's apartment, into the kitchen, into the electrical, into everything. So I can see why it's difficult to rent to students. Yeah, I've I've actually heard of that um, before, um, and that's a case. And you hate to say this, but that's a case of the property manager or the landlord of that property not keeping on track of what's going on in their building. Mm-hmm. Because somebody would have to see somebody coming in the door with a big box with a pool in it. Do you know what I'm saying? You have to. Not that you're trying to be big brother. You're watching them, but you have to. Either pay somebody or you have to keep track of your property. Mm-hmm. You can't just leave it. And and like I said, too, undergraduates, I've had some excellent undergraduates uh, that were and parents, wonderful. You know, I've had some law students. I will tell you, I had a med student. Uh, actually, wasn't he was an intern at one of the hospitals in Boston. Mm-hmm. And um, if I ever get somebody that calls me for a reference, you'll get the worst reference in the world. So it, it takes all kinds of 
people, but you just you've got to be on top of your game like you are yeah. in your office. Oh, you know what well, I'm saying? Thank you. And Ginny is sending us a text saying yeah. that you were wonderful. But Colleen, I'm hoping um, I can probably get your phone number from Ginny. I would love it if you could come on as a guest and do a show with us one day and we can talk about sure. all the ins and outs of this. That would be great because I only have five minutes, four minutes left. And uh, one of my favorite loan officers uh, is actually waiting to talk because I do want to ask him specifically sure. about that question. But I really do appreciate you calling in this morning. Uh, so Colleen from Plymouth and I'm looking forward to connecting with you in 2024 okay very good have a great day thank you Colleen thanks Colleen take care so that was Colleen she's a property Property manager manager. that's why I love this show it's called a round table for a reason I have four minutes left well really three so we can get some other things done Mark is with us um, right now so Mark um, I always want to say his name wrong I tell or anyways I have him in my phone as Mark from Clubhouse Mark are you there I'm here. Can you hear me? I certainly can. You sound like David Allen Boucher, Midnight Magic is what you sound like. No, no, no it's, it's bedtime. <laughs> bedtime magic. Bedtime magic. <laughs> yeah. 42 degrees for the joggers. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, wow, sorry, you do. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, you're really good. I only Thank really you. have like three minutes left, but I was I was really trying to like pin you at the same time. So here's my question for you, um, if you can do it in a minute or less. In, sure. Um, so we're talking about, we were talking about the process of, you know, buying and selling at the same time and trying to juggle that and one of the things that we were talking about is not only people who are selling a house and then going but people who are in rentals and in leases and what prompted this question for me is as a loan officer are you looking at are you asking that question like okay you want to buy a house but you have eight months left on your lease and you're looking now like are you looking at their leases are you considering okay if they're paying three thousand dollars a month for rent Are you factoring that all in? You must be, right? Yes. So that's a great question. We do take that into consideration. We ask that question. And oftentimes we're planning with them a closing date that alleviates two payments in that last month. Because unless they're prepared to break the lease, and some people are, there's usually a cash penalty to break a lease. And if the opportunity is great, they'll do that. But um, we never recommend just walking away from a lease because there's going to be derogatory, a derogatory credit event because of that. But yes, leases are something that needs to be part of the conversation for certain. Yeah. So because I know we um, we just had Colleen from Plymouth uh, down here. And if you're not familiar with Plymouth, that's where The Rock is, by the way, Mark. Um, we She was a property manager and she's saying, yeah, I mean, if you're locked into a lease, it is a legal binding contract. Right. And, you know, certainly you don't want to walk away from it. Um, But, you know, a lot of times there isn't one of those clauses in there that says, okay, if you decide to break your lease, you only have to pay one month. I mean, certainly people could be putting themselves in a predicament if they have eight months left on top of, you know, then trying to qualify. Like, I just can't even imagine somebody being able to. And again, I'm using $30,000 as a number. But if you get closer into the city, it's $3,700, $3,800 a month. Well. Here's the sad thing, and I didn't want to interrupt, but I know we're squeezed for time, yeah. is that the the financial obligations of breaking the lease aren't part of the consideration when we're v- reviewing cash to close. So mm-hmm. a lot of people could be moving forward into an event that's going to negatively impact their credit or require cash they're not prepared for because we're just looking at the closing. And sadly, guys, the closing is not what the end is you should be looking at life after the loan right so your financial health is still in order and you can make your payments and you're going to be building your credit even from the closing moving forward but brilliant question i i love that you're looking this deeply because it's a big part of the equation awesome well um here's our music is going but mark will you join us i love this music (laughs) yeah we put together a little um i'm going to put together an agenda and i hope that you can join me maybe next saturday because we don't have anything and we can continue this conversation on doing this are you up for that anytime anytime i would have been here earlier but i just saw your text so Um, i love I love this forum, and I'm happy to be a part of it. All right, perfect. Well, thank you, Mark. And to all our listeners, thank you for joining us. BostonConnect.com is how you can get in touch with us, 781-826-8000. Have a beautiful day, and uh, welcome to the neighborhood. Hey, um, Clubhouse people, can you still hear me? I wonder how that goes through. Kristen, can you still hear me? Hey, Sharon, good morning. Okay.